listed. My name is, is Chris Buke, um, the field services manager here in the, the Northwest, also located in the, the Beaverton office with Jordan. And the topic I want to talk about is one that is uh, definitely, I'll say, near and dear to my heart, and that is SOLIDWORKS sketching. I think sketches are the most important thing in SOLIDWORKS because if you don't have quality sketches, you really don't have a quality model. So I'm going to be going over a few tips and tricks, and my intention is ways to make these sketches a bit easier. So when I think about tips or tricks, um, there's a lot of different ways to define that. What is considered a tip and trick? One thing to think about is, is a lesser known command. As I look at the participant list today, there are a great number of attendees, and I thank you all for showing up. Um, I'm also going to assume that there's probably a, a very wide, diverse skill level with SOLIDWORKS. We probably have some people that have been using SOLIDWORKS for 10, 15, 20 years, probably some attendees that are very new to SOLIDWORKS. So, um, you know, a, a tip or trick is definitely a variable. I think of lesser known commands. Maybe it's something you don't use that much anymore. What about keyboard shortcuts? I think we would all agree they, they could fall into that category. Um, now, for me, I'm not a huge user of keyboard shortcuts, but I will go over some that I think are more or less universal in SOLIDWORKS sketching, share some of those with everyone. Or what I like to think of, those really slick ways that make you look like a SOLIDWORKS hero, you know, really clever workarounds, um, those hip slick, cool ways of doing things in SOLIDWORKS. Definitely what I would say considered a tip or a trick. And I'm sure there are many, many more that you guys might consider a tip or trick that I'm not talking about here. What about just a little bit of anything? You know, one person's common knowledge is another person's tip or trick in my experience. But when it gets down to it, I think it's anything that helps you be more efficient, helps you use the software more effectively, helps you get over this hump of, of having some difficult scenario. And that's really what I'm going to focus on. Um, I'm not going to be talking about things today that are unknown to SOLIDWORKS. I hope a lot of this stuff you guys do know. I hope you're taking advantage of it. And maybe if there's a few things that I'm showing that you haven't seen before, I definitely hope it'll, it'll help you out moving forward. So as we go through this sketching tips and tricks uh, this morning, a few things I will talk about. I'm going to start off with some best practices. Again, I'm, I'm going to guess that there's a wide diversity of experience here. So I'll go over things that, that I've found over my years of using SOLIDWORKS that are definitely helpful. Uh, my cheat sheet for relations. You know, everybody starts with SOLIDWORKS somewhere. Relations are the framework that holds our sketches together, and those little call-outs are teeny tiny on the screen. Um, so I've just created a, uh, a cheat sheet, print it out, throw it up on the wall, help you memorize what all these little icons represent. I definitely wish I had something like this when I got started many, many, many years ago. I'll show again some of those keyboard shortcuts that I like to leverage, and then I'll just throw in a random assortment of tips, not really any specific flow as I'm going through things here. Uh, some of these just might, uh, might pop up as we go. And of course, I'll be showing all of this through a handful of live examples so you can kind of see exactly how SOLIDWORKS works when we invoke a few of these things. So starting off with some best in practice, first and foremost, Always think about and consider the design intent. Um, and if you're not familiar with design intent, or maybe you forgot that definition, it's your plan on how the model should behave when you change it. Uh, this is one of those things that years and years and years ago, we really pushed hard, design intent, design intent, design intent. And lately, um, you know, I don't hear it used that frequently, and it's still very, very important to think about when you're using a parametric tool like SOLIDWORKS. How should the sketch or how should the model behave when we change a dimension or when we change a relation or something like that? So we always want to keep that in the forefront of when we're modeling something. Use those reference planes. Your front, your top, your right planes, those orthogonal planes, maybe any additionally created reference planes. Always recommend dimension and add relations to those reference planes. Those are very robust, rigid entities. They're not going to move around. You're not going to lose those edges, if you will. So it's a good thing to just kind of get into that habit. Definitely leverage that reference geometry. Keep your sketches simple. 
Uh, in my experience with support, I've seen too many sketches that are so complex I have no idea what's going on. I've also been guilty of doing that myself. Create a very, very complex sketch and I open the part up in a year and I, have, I can't remember what I did. So keep your sketches simple. It's going to make it easy to solve, easy to understand, and if you share your model with some other user, they're going to have a really easy time to get up to speed um, you know, if you're collaborating on a project and, and working together there. Use your construction geometry. Uh, a lot of users are familiar with the centerline command, and they think that that's the only type of construction line we can create. But every type of entity, circles, splines, arcs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they can all be made construction. Use it. It can be very, very helpful with uh, defining a, a complex or kind of tricky sketch. Another thing, fully define your sketches. You might be thinking, why am I mentioning that? Of course we fully define your sketches. Um, a lot of, of models I look at uh, throughout the course of my day, I see underdefined sketches. Now, I do realize that you don't know every single dimension and every single relation when you're, you're conceptualizing or you're creating a model. But if you're releasing a design and it's going into production, please fully define all of those sketches. If things are underdefined, they have that potential to solve, to move, and I always say in SOLIDWORKS, if a sketch can move, it probably will move. So again, always think about that fully defined sketches. Create closed contours. You know, you want to have a nice closed loop. You want to essentially, I say, connect the dots if you trace the outside of your sketch. Um, that's going to determine whether or not you create a, a standard feature or a thin feature in SOLIDWORKS. So make sure that those, those contours are closed up. And one that, you know, yeah, maybe it's kind of on the fence as whether or not it's a best practice, um, but this is maybe a bit more of my opinion. I like to name important sketches. And just so you know, you can hit the letter F2 on your keyboard. That's a, a renaming shortcut key inside of Windows. It works for all your sketches and features and things of that nature in the Feature Manager tree. But I know that I've created, you know, every once in a while some complex models, and I could have... 10, 15 different sketches, especially when surface modeling, just to help me build a set of curves. And they're named Sketch 1, Sketch 2, Sketch 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I've been known to accidentally delete something that's very, very important. Um, renaming those just kind of sets them out from the others and, and, for me, makes it a little bit easier to understand. So those are a few things that I always kind of try to keep at the top of my, top of my list whenever I'm building anything inside of SolidWorks. So for those of you kind of getting started in the software, relationships, again, they are the framework that make our sketches, you know, solve, make them do what they're supposed to do. And those little call-outs on the screen can be a little bit small, a little bit difficult to visualize. I see a lot of confusion, especially for new users, between coincidence and midpoint or parallel and equal. Um, so you can see just larger icons list what everything is and, you know, take a screenshot if you want it. If you're at all interested, I'll throw my email address up at the end, you know, send you the presentation so you can extract that, print it out, put it up on the wall, and then, you know, tomorrow you'll have these memorized and you won't need the piece of paper anymore. So, since we're starting with the absolute basics of sketching, I thought I would start, again, with the basics of the basics, just how do you sketch inside of SOLIDWORKS. I'm sure we all know that Click, move the mouse, click, move the mouse, you know, click, move the mouse, creates that chain of connected entities. But one thing I come across quite frequently is we forget that we can click, hold down the left mouse button and drag a single entity at a time. I also come across many users that have been using the software for quite some time that don't even realize that you can do that. Another thing that I like to talk about here, and I have a little animation showing it, is leverage those inference lines. Those are the dashed lines that help you add relations on the fly when you're sketching. And I say wake them up. As you notice in this animation, the little orange inference lines are initially horizontal and vertical, but if you just brush your mouse over, kind of hover it over another entity, you can add the relationship to that entity again on the fly. It's one of those things that you, know, you might think is common knowledge, or you might forget about it and just uh, kind of go th about things the hard way. Keyboard shortcuts that I like to use. Number one, first and foremost, the S key. 
It literally is, in my opinion, the greatest thing ever. I love this shortcut toolbar, the S key. It's completely user customizable. You can set up a, a set of commands for sketches, for parts, for assemblies, for drawings. And I'll show you how I like to use it. Um, really eliminates the mouse movement and jumping all over throughout the UI. It really helps you um, kind of eliminate that hunting and pecking to find that particular command you might need. Uh, I think of it as its complement toolbar or complement keyboard shortcut. That's the letter D. Brings the confirmation corner right to the mouse. So this allows you to easily exit a sketch or cancel a sketch, accept or cancel a command. So again, that's just letter D, brings the little uh, selection checkbox or X right to the uh, mouse called the uh, confirmation corner. The art transitions, the letter A, single click the letter A, you can bounce between lines and arcs, lines and arcs, lines and arcs and arcs by hitting A again. Whenever I show this live and I don't talk about it, I usually will get a person say, whoa, 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 what'd you do? Stop, stop. That was, what's going on there? So I just want to emphasize that letter A allows you to toggle between lines and arcs. And if you've been using SolidWorks for a really long time, you might remember before the letter A came in there and you had to use a mouse gesture, and I'll show that in one of the demonstrations to get the same type of behavior. Another one that can... Uh, kind of raise a few eyebrows is uh, dimensioning to circle tangencies or arc tangencies. That's accomplished by holding down the shift key when you create those dimensions. And then another, if you're ever creating a sketch and you do not want the software to create and solve an automatic relation, hold down the control key. So here you can see in that little animation there, drawing out the line by default. SolidWorks wants to create the coincidence, the midpoint relations, but once you hold down the control key, it shuts the auto relation solver off just temporarily, and then you can basically freely draw that line. So just a couple that can come in handy in your day-to-day -day usage of SolidWorks. So let's, let's put some of these into action. And I think you'll all agree that the sketches I build today are not super complex. They're very basic just to show little snippets of information. So I'm going to draw what you see up on the screen, a couple of circles and a construction line and some dimensions. I'm going to leverage that shortcut or the S key. Of course, I'm going to use some construction geometry. Uh, another thing that tends to get forgotten about in sketching, in my experience, is window and crossing selection. Makes it really easy to here I say just grab a bunch of entities and mirror, for example, or select a group of entities and add relations between them. So I'll kind of show how you could leverage the, uh, the crossing and window selection behavior inside of SolidWorks. I'll reinforce using that Shift key to add those dimensions. And let's go ahead and build something inside of SolidWorks. So I like to use the, uh, the recent documents when I'm jumping around and kind of grabbing different files here. And nothing that I'm doing here is, is overly complex. We'll just put in a sketch on the front plane. I'll use the, that letter S to bring up my shortcut toolbar. Now, this shortcut toolbar has been customized. This is not what it looks like out of the box. So if you're interested in leveraging this, you can right-click on it and choose Customize. And this gets you into the full customization of the SolidWorks UI. So I mentioned earlier that there are shortcut toolbars for parts, assemblies, drawings, and things like that. So here we can see just clicking these little icons allows us to you know, customize part modeling, assembly modeling, drawings, and what we'll talk about today are sketches. If there's a command that you like to use, you can find it from the list. So maybe it's a sketching command. Just drag and drop that command over to this area here. Uh, maybe it's a features command, and that's one of the things that I really like about um, what SOLIDWORKS has done here is there are commands that we almost always go directly from sketch to feature, such as extruded boss or extruded cut or maybe a revolve boss. So I can add those feature commands or sketch-based features directly on my sketch toolbar or my sketch shortcut bar, excuse me, and I just drag and drop revolve boss there. And now I can just S key to start a sketch, draw it all in there, S key to grab my dimensions because I've got that there, and then finally S key to build a 3D feature. Really keeps you focused right on the, uh, the graphical UI, right where your model's being created. So I'm going to start off with a midpoint line. Uh, one of the newer sketch lines in SOLIDWORKS has been in there for a handful of releases. 
I like to use it. It allows me to dynamically build symmetry. We can just click the center of my line, drag out a horizontal line right there. Again, leverage that shortcut toolbar to build a couple of circles. So circle on the left, circle on the right. Again, nothing too complex. Now, already I've violated some sketching rules inside of SolidWorks, where I have two closed contours, the circles. You can see that they're shaded. I've got the shaded sketch contour setting on. But I also have a horizontal solid sketch line, and that's going to cause some problems when I try to create an extruded boss or a cut or whatever feature. So I'll select on that line and just toggle it to construction. And this little button easily gets overlooked. You kind of forget about it. I know I do. But this allows us to turn any piece of sketch geometry into construction. And then you can use it for dimensions and relations, but I no longer have to worry about it kind of impeding my progress when building a feature. My design intent is to have two circles of the same diameter, so I'm going to use a crossing window, and that's to hold the mouse down from right and move it to the left. You can see um, it's a green preview. The edges are, are dashed, might be a little bit hard to see over WebEx, but I can select those two circles and from the pop-up toolbar make them equal. A window selection is from left to right, and the preview shading is going to be blue. So again, just a mouse gesture, right to left crossing, left to right, will give us that window selection. Let's add in a few dimensions. Again, leveraging the S key, that's what you're seeing pop up there. We'll just make these circles, we'll round that to 60, and now we'll dimension the two circles themselves. And the default behavior of the software is to always dimension center point to center point, which is great, except when you don't want it to do that. So again, there's a way to do this on the fly, and that is to hold down the shift key. So I will hit escape once and twice to, to start that dimension process over, and now I'm holding down the shift key. And I'll select the circle on the left, and continuing to hold down the shift key, we can see the dimension style is a little bit different. Now you might be wondering, why did it dimension that? Well, let me explain a little bit further. It's all based on where you place the mouse. If it finds us close to the center, it'll go center to center. Or if you move the mouse to the far side tangency or the near side tangency, it'll dynamically change. So it's very much mouse gesture based. Now, I didn't quite get the dimension right the first time. I went from center to the circle on the left, as you can see there, to the outer tangency. That's OK. You can actually change this after the fact. So another little tip. Don't delete the dimension, just change what we call the arc condition. So I'll select the dimension, choose the leaders tab, and down here towards the very bottom, here we can see I'm going to switch it from center over to max. So as long as you dimension circle to circle or arc to arc, you always have the option to change the arc conditions after the fact. You can also change the, uh, the arc conditions by dragging the extension lines. Just click and drag that point there. I tend to take the old school approach and just you know, manually change the, uh, the text-based art conditions. And then we can change that dimension down to as we see fit. So pretty simple little example. Again, leveraging that S key for the shortcut toolbar, leveraging the shift key primarily to dimension to those tangency points on the circle. The next example I want to discuss is sketch symmetry, and this really falls into the category of design intent. I want to talk about one of my favorite sketching commands, that is dynamic mirror. But I'll also show you some ways to use the regular mirror, but speed that process up. There's a couple of shortcuts you can use uh, when leveraging just the standard sketch mirror command. And what about uh, angle dimensions. I like to throw that example in here as well. You can see on the screen I've got this 35 degree angle. I do not have a horizontal line though to dimension to. Um, how are ways that we can get that in there? Well, let's jump into SolidWorks and you'll see why I am an application engineer, not an aerospace engineer when I draw that little airplane profile out. So again, we'll jump into SolidWorks. We'll start up a new part real quick and let's talk about capturing that symmetric design intent. So I always like to start my sketches. If I know I'm building symmetry, old habits die hard, I always start with a center line or just any type of construction line. So I'll go ahead and I'll draw that in here. And the length, again, really doesn't make any difference. But one thing that I see a lot of users doing is exactly this. They know they want symmetry in their sketch. 
They draw their center line, and then they start drawing in whatever it is that they want to sketch or want to be symmetric, excuse me. So I'll just draw in my really rough outline here, and we'll put in a few sketches. I'm going to hit the letter A right now to transition from that, that line to the arc. There you can see how that behavior works. Hit A again. It'll switch us back to that other type of entity. Again, you can just mouse over any piece of geometry, and you can capture those inference lines. There it is right there on the fly, so some, some helpful tips. But we'll create an arc right to that endpoint, and there is one half of my, my airframe profile. I now want to mirror it over to the other side. So we go up to the sketch toolbar, we leverage the mirror entities command, and what do we do? Well, we start selecting entities one at a time. And this takes a while. I think we'll all agree this is probably not the most efficient way of doing things. We then move our mouse back over to the property manager. We move our mouse back into the graphics window. We select the center line, and there we can see my silly looking sketch. Completely effective, but there are ways to speed line that process or speed that process up. Now, I have my center line to mirror across. I have all the geometry that I want to mirror. And if your sketch falls underneath this category of solid geometry to mirror and a single, it's important here, single center line to mirror across, simply select everything. And then go click the Mirror Entities command. SolidWorks will figure out what entity goes where. You don't have to worry about click, move the mouse around, click, 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 move over to the property manager or anything like that. So definitely saves you some, some steps. Some other things you can do to kind of speed this process up is always look for that right mouse button. You can use a select chain, and that'll grab the chain of solid entities there. And then if you're more comfortable, you could say mirror entities, grab the mirror about window, and go ahead and select everything out. So there's always ways to speed this up. I like to say when in doubt, hit the right mouse button. Chances are there's a really useful context-sensitive menu there that you might not be familiar with. So I'll use a crossing window to remove everything and talk about the way that I like to create mirrors, and that is to leverage the command called dynamic mirror entities. Now, unfortunately, it is not part of the default sketching toolbar, so I need to find it. Well, the way that I'm going to find it is leverage command search in the upper right-hand corner. You don't have to get too far with your typing before SolidWorks will bring up a list of, of matching commands. I got to dy and SOLIDWORKS already found dynamic mirror entities. At this point, I've got a number of options. I can select the command. I can use the eyeball to show the command location. And now SOLIDWORKS will navigate through the UI automatically and show me exactly where it's buried under tools, sketch tools, and so on. I can then select the command right here and launch it. Or if this is a command that you find useful, when you search, you can select the icon, select the name of it, and just drag it and drop it to customize your UI. So you don't have to know where any command is as long as you can type a few characters to search for them. And that really isn't a sketching tip, but just a general SolidWorks tip. You can find that command, drag and drop it onto the UI. So I'll grab dynamic mirror entities, select the vertical center line, and now you can see at each end of my center line, there's those little kind of hash lines. That represents I'm in dynamic mirror mode. Now whatever I mirror to the right or sketch to the right is mirrored to the left and vice versa. So as fast as I can click the mouse, I'm getting mirrored geometry on the other side of my sketch. And everything, I think we'll agree, looks, uh, looks pretty good right there. And we'll just kind of finish things off. Much, much faster than the way that I was doing it previously. In order to control the angle of, of the wings, that, that sweep angle, or sweat back angle, I'll put in a dimension. So the trick to getting a dimension to an angle by only selecting a line is as follows. Select the line, and then the end point. This will control the vertex, and you can select which arrow of that vertex to be the essentially second selection. So that'll be my horizontal reference, and then I can specify you know, maybe a 45 degree angle on those. So that works in sketches, as you can see here. It also works in your drawings, really works anywhere. Again, just to uh, show it again, select the line, the point where I want my angle vertex for the dimension. I'll grab that arrow, and then I could set that angle to whatever I think is appropriate. 
So a couple little tricks with, with dimensions there. That'll eliminate a couple of steps of some extra construction geometry or extra sketch geometry. Now, sketch symmetry works great for 2D sketches, but what about 3D sketches? Well, in, in older versions of SOLIDWORKS, this is where you needed to use one of those SOLIDWORKS hero techniques to mirror, effectively mirror a 3D sketch. Maybe you created some surface geometry and did some body mirrors and some convert entities and things like that. Thankfully, SOLIDWORKS has made this much, much easier for us. A um, little bit newer functionality, so I want to go through and kind of show you how this works. Um, but don't forget, you can now mirror inside of your 3D sketches in 2018 and newer. The other thing I want to point out is I kind of think that everything being a gray sketch is a little bit boring inside of SOLIDWORKS. You can see here this sketch is purple. Well, to kind of highlight important sketches, or any sketch for that matter, you can right-click on it and go in and change the sketch color. Now, you can only do this when you are not editing the sketch, but now I'm going to change it from purple to kind of a, a reddish, pinkish color, and we'll call it good there. That way it stands out visibly from the screen. With a right click, we'll edit the sketch. And before we go any further, I also want to show you something pretty cool that they've added recently here. You can see this arc is inverted. Well, now you can simply right click on that arc and reverse that endpoint tangent. This is going to save any type of problems of dangling dimensions, relations, things breaking downstream. Now we are in a 3D sketch. I've created one half of the sketch. Let's go ahead and mirror that sketch, and we will leverage just standard mirror entities. The nice thing about mirror entities now is it supports reference planes. So I'll window select all of the sketch geometry. I'm going to pause right here, and I want to highlight. It might be hard to see on the screen, but notice where my mouse cursor is, right around in here. Ah, it went away. Let me try it again. But when you select everything, and you're in a command that requires jumping from one selection window to the next, simply hit the right mouse button. So this will, will automatically switch me from the Entities to Mirror area in the Property Manager on the left to the Mirror About area. Using that right mouse button can save you a step of moving your mouse to and from the Graphics window over to the Property Manager. There you can see I select the right-hand plane. We'll say OK. I really should use the letter D to bring the confirmation corner to my mouse, not go the other way around. There we go and it is a fully parametric uh, 3D mirrored sketch now. And roll it to the end, it will behave just like any sketch and any feature that you expect. So sketch level mirrors now in SOLIDWORKS, you know, throw in a little bit of newer functionality. They support both 2D sketch lines, but also reference planes in 2D sketches and 3D sketches. Power trim. You've created a sketch and you have a bunch of, dare I say, nonsense in there. And I think of power trim because the regular trim command just isn't enough. Who doesn't want more power? Who doesn't want more functionality? Power trim is where it's at. Um, power trim will, will literally, in my experience, do anything you need to do when it comes to trimming, deleting, and or extending sketch geometry. So let's take a look at how it works and kind of show you the maybe not so hidden undo inside of the power trim anymore. Um, but it's easy to overlook. So we'll jump into Power Trim, and here's the exact same sketch I had up on, up on the screen there. Into my shortcut toolbar, there's my little scissors for Trim Entities. And Trim Entities works by clicking and holding down the left mouse button. So I'm going to click and hold down. There's a little wiggly line trailing my mouse. That's just uh, an indicator of where my mouse has gone. And anything I mouse over, is removed. I still have my finger holding down the left mouse button. Notice that little red dot that's up on the screen? That is the internal undo. And if I move my mouse over it, having a heck of a time hitting it there, it'll undo one, and then it'll undo the other. So just drag and drop that mouse. Now, as you click and drag and you trim entities away, you can really trim everything out. Now I've gone from multiple contours to two closed contours. You can put the sketch back together because Power Trim also has an internal extend. You can click on segments, and I'm just going to single click, and the segment preview is attached to the mouse. 
So I could come all the way over here, maybe and select on this vertical line, left click again, and it'll extend that angled line to where it would intersect the vertical line. I could take this line here, click it, and click there, and it'll take it right to that intersection. Click and drag to further ex uh, trim those away. So it really is a very, very useful command. It takes a little bit of practice. You know, I recommend if you've, if you've not spent a lot of time with power trim, just build a silly sketch like this, get a bunch of things over uh, intersecting with one another, and then leverage that power trim command. It can trim, it can extend, uh, it can delete. You know, it can come in here and just get rid of everything if you want to. Maybe not the most effective way, but you can see everything that the good old power trim command can do for you. Virtual sharps, get a lot of questions about virtual sharps. Maybe not a ton in sketches, see it quite a bit in drawings. I say it dimension to nothing. Uh, you can see here the, the 25 dimensioning to a little, little crosshair there, the 45, you know, just kind of floating out in space there. We'll take a look at why they're created automatically. There are some scenarios where virtual sharps are just there. Um, but that's not every case, so I want to show you how you can add your own, and there's a couple of ways that you can add these things we call virtual sharps inside of our SOLIDWORKS sketches. The technique I'll show works both for sketches, but also inside of your drawings. If you've got, you know, model edges and you want to uh, dimension where those edges intersect and it's not there anymore because it's been filleted away or whatever the case is, I'll say the virtual sharp or quote-unquote dimensioning to nothing uh, to the rescue here. So here's the same sketch that I had open. And first I want to talk about when virtual sharps are created automatically. And that is because the underlying entities are already dimensioned. So for example, the sketch is fully defined. You know, again, everything is black, everything is known, it can't move around anymore. And this vertex is known. That 45 millimeter dimension fully defines it. Typically, we see virtual sharps after we create sketch fillets. So I'll go ahead and I'll drop a sketch fillet in there. And in the property manager, I'll change the 10 millimeters down to 2.5. And, and the key to these automatic virtual sharps is this checkbox called Keep Constrained Corners. It is on by default. And what SOLIDWORKS will do is it will maintain the underlying dimensional and relationship continuity. And then when we add that fillet in there, we don't get any broken geometry and essentially it extends those lines out to create that virtual sharp piece of geometry. That's great when it happens automatically, but what about cases where we didn't think about that? Maybe we put the fillets in before we dimensioned. So I'll do a couple of, of undos here. I'm going to delete the 45, and I'll add that filler back in there. And because that, uh, that dimension isn't there, SOLIDWORKS does not automatically create that virtual sharp. There's nothing to dimension to if I want to show, you know, the, the length of that old line. A couple ways that we can do this. Kind of the old school method is to leverage the sketch point command. And I'll just kind of highlight that up on my sketch toolbar. We don't use those that frequently inside of SOLIDWORKS, at least I don't. Um, but in order to effectively create a virtual sharp, I need to pre-select the two lines that intersect. So I will hold down the control keys, select them both, go up to the sketch toolbar, click on the sketch point, and you'll see those extended kind of reference lines show up there. So those are my virtual sharps. I can now dimension to that entity just like, you know, it was there to begin with. It's just a point. Go ahead and put that in there, and there we can see we can still fully define that, uh, that sketch with that 45 millimeter dimension. Now, not everybody wants those extended large crossing lines, so you can change the visibility or the display of your virtual sharps. We'll get into the options. And if you've ever ventured into the options of SOLIDWORKS, I think you'll agree with me that there are thousands upon thousands. I honestly do not know how many there are. Um, but what I don't want anyone to do is fall into the hunting and pecking for a command. Uh, or an option. There's so many, it's hard to figure out what's what. So leverage in the upper right-hand corner, the option search. And I'm just going to get to VIR for virtual. There we can see uh, virtual sharps. It'll take me right there. 
and I can change how they're displayed for this document. So maybe I'll switch it from the extended witness lines over to the star, little asterisk symbol, and there we can see the difference in the display. Now that works, but let's show you one more way to create a virtual sharp. I'm going to go ahead and delete the old virtual sharp right there, and this is, this is kind of the, uh, the slick way, the SOLIDWORKS hero way maybe. And that is when you're in a dimension, you can start this before or after, you can right click on a segment and say find intersection. There's also some neat options in here, maybe select a midpoint, pre-select a midpoint of a sketch line possibly. But I'll use this find intersection, click on the other, it builds the virtual sharp and attaches the dimension to that virtual sharp for you. So it's definitely a, a more fluid process than the older method of pre-selecting the two intersecting lines, clicking the sketch point and all of that. So again, when you're in a sketch dimension, you can see it's not there because I'm not dimensioning. So I'll go ahead and I'll get in into my smart dimension tool, just right click, find intersection. That'll always be there, just another way to create those virtual sharps, I'll say on the fly. What about reusing sketches? Well, there's many ways that you can do that. One way you can share a sketch. You can use one sketch over and over and over in your SOLIDWORKS part models. Now, the thing to understand is it's the same sketch on the same sketch plane, so essentially all your features must be uh, parallel with respect to one another. This allows you to effectively leverage the contour selection functionality inside of SOLIDWORKS. Pretty slick way um, to share those sketches and kind of have a master layout sketch. But you can also just use a simple copy and paste. Select a sketch in the tree, control C, copy it to the clipboard, select a new plane or face, control V, just like in Windows, to, to copy and paste that sketch. And what you don't see, though, in SOLIDWORKS is in the right-click menu, copy, right-click, paste. So get used to that Control-C, Control-V. There's a lot of places you can copy and paste just about everything in SOLIDWORKS, but you're not going to see a right-click, copy, paste menu. There's also derived sketches, where you can have one sketch that is a derived and associative link to the other. Now, I'm not going to show all of these, you know, copy and Paste sketches, you know, you can, those are pretty easy to figure out. Drive sketches don't need them too effectively anymore. But a couple of other things to think about on ways to reuse a sketch. What I am going to go through is, is contour selection and sharing a sketch. I get a lot of questions about that, what these little symbols represent right there. So back into SOLIDWORKS, we'll open up the next model I want to take a look at. And there we can see the geometry. Now this is what I would consider maybe a layout sketch for this part. Uh, maybe you think of layout sketches a little bit more for assemblies, but if appropriate, you could essentially build all the contours in one sketch. It does violate some sketching rules where we've got multiple intersecting contours and we might have a few issues. So if you do generate your sketches like you see up on the screen, don't be shocked that when you go to an extruded boss or a cut command that you don't see a preview. You'll also notice to the lower right of the mouse that little uh, kind of polygonal shape with a circle in there. That is the contour selection icon. I'll just draw attention to the cursor there. Selected contours is always at the, uh, the bottom of, of any sketch base features. Sometimes they're enacted automatically like here. Sometimes you can always expand the little arrow and turn them on. And this makes the features inside of SOLIDWORKS, in my opinion, very, very uh, powerful. Now as I move the mouse around, I can extract different regions, different areas, different sketch contours, and reuse the sketch over and over and over. So I'll just grab that outer profile, you know, specify a depth for that, change our end conditions as we see fit, and we'll build that feature in there. Now I've turned that sketch on so it's always visible in the graphics area. But if we go to the Feature Manager tree, I can simply left-click to select that sketch and then use it for a second, third, fourth, fifth, however many appropriate features there are. So I'll just select that sketch. I'm going to hit the S key, and now I'm going to build an extruded cut. There's no need to go in and edit that sketch. And actually, if you do edit that sketch, you won't be able to 
build it or excuse me share it for a new extruded boss or a new extruded cut so that's an important thing to understand is that don't go into edit sketch mode just left click to select a sketch I'm going to use that shortcut toolbar to create an extruded cut and now I'll start extracting a few other contours here I'll grab that figure eight shape as you can see up on the screen and specify a depth you know whatever's appropriate and now when I add this sketch and this feature in there Sketch 1 is now shared between the two. So it has the little hand that's an icon for Windows file and folder shares. Um, that's what SolidWorks uses here. And I can repeat this process and just keep reusing different little pieces and regions and, and areas of my sketch over and over and over. So maybe we'll create this cut in there. Let's create this cut on the other side so they can be you know, regions that are not connected to one another. That is also supported in this contour selection functionality. And last but not least, we'll select Sketch 1 for the final time, create a few cuts through all, and we'll just grab every single circular profile. A little bit hard to see, but as you select the different regions, the graphics update, they preview, and you can see exactly what's going on. And now I essentially have one sketch. Well, strike essentially, I do have one sketch that controls everything in my part model. So one-stop shopping, if you will, to go in and make any change to this sketch. Now this does contradict a little bit of what I said initially, and that is to keep your sketches simple. I personally can fall into the habit of building overly complex sketches if I leverage this contour selection and sketch reuse uh, technique. So there is a fine line. You know, do be aware that there's there's always that that um, happy medium where it's just enough information to convey your design intent, but not too much information to uh, make it confusing. And then I'm getting ready to wrap things up here. I want to talk about just some other ways to build sketches. Uh, this is kind of a silly example, but I really like the commands it uses, and that is to leverage the intersection curve. You might not use this command on a day-to-day -day basis. Typically, I find myself needing intersection curve when I'm working on complex geometries and I need to build, as you see here, a complex three-dimensional uh, spline curve. You know, just let the geometry work for you. Build the, the surfaces in this example where they intersect. That's the complex uh, situation. Let SolidWorks automatically create it for us. So that's what we're going to take a look at here, the intersection curve. Another thing that I use from time to time is select right on an edge. So you can pick an edge, create a sketch. And what SolidWorks will do is create a sketch normal, create a plane and a sketch normal to the closest endpoint. This works for model edges, but also for existing sketches. So you can click a sketch and put a new sketch on it, and it'll be perpendicular to the endpoint of that curve. The key is that pre-selection step. So jumping into SolidWorks here for nearly the last time, let's take a look at this example. And as I go in and edit this sketch, it definitely has some problems. And I want to uh, kind of circle back and talk a little bit again about sketch symmetry. So I've got some nice construction geometry here. I've got my little spline grid, just a few... Uh, few ordinate dimensions to help space it out, and I have some spline points that clearly are not symmetric, and I want them to be symmetric. So you can't always generate symmetry through a mirror dynamically, anything like that. Sometimes you need to create it, what I say, after, after the fact. And this is one of those cases. So I'll select the spline point at the bottom, continue to hold down the control key across my line that I want to have symmetry across, and the point on the other side. And when I let go, I will have the make symmetric relation in there. So behind the scenes, this is what Sketch Mirror is doing for you. It's just generating all these sketch symmetry relations to the various vertices of the sketches, the segments, things like that. Now I want to create a dimension, but unlike the 32 millimeter dimension, where it's essentially half the distance, I want a dimension all the way across. So we can do that by dimensioning the point and a construction line. This is one of those little dimension tricks, if you want to call it that. Just move your mouse to the other side. It'll double the value. In this case, it's not really necessary because I have that spline point to work with. 
but you might not always have that extra point. Works really well for revolve sketches. Sketch an entity and a construction line in the sketch. That's key. Move the mouse to the far side, and you can get that doubled value. So now I have my geometry. I'll just show my, my couple of surfaces and where they intersect. Well, that's where I need my 3D curve. So I'll hide a couple of previously created sketches, and if you can just think about trying to build that with a 3D sketch, it might be a little bit easier said than done. Thankfully, under Convert Entities is the intersection command. I don't have this one mapped to my shortcut toolbar. I don't use it every day, but when I do, I'm thankful it's in SolidWorks. Intersection command, simply select two items that intersect. This example are surface bodies, but it's not limited to surface bodies. It could be reference planes and solids, surfaces and solids, planes and surfaces, you name it. If it intersects, SolidWorks will generate a curve between them. And as easy as that, we can go ahead and have that 3D, 3D curve there. And I did something there without thinking. That's leveraging the tab key to hide surface bodies or hide any body. So not necessarily only a sketch tip. Um, tab to hide, tab to hide a body, shift tab will bring those bodies back. So there we can see a little thing right there. And now I could go ahead and use that curve to generate a, a sweep or whatever other type of operation I may need to use. So again, underneath convert entities is the intersection curve. Anything that intersects, it'll generate a, a 2D or 3D sketch where it needs to, and then you could use that sketch for whatever type of operation. And then wrapping things up here, what about sketch editing? How many of you have ever created a sketch on the wrong plane? It happens all the time. Um, you think you're on the top plane, but you're actually on the front plane or vice versa. That's okay. You know, click away is good old edit sketch plane to kind of save the day. Walk through taking a look at that. And an oldie but goodie. This is definitely one of those that falls underneath the category of forgotten entities, modify sketch. The important thing to understand about modify sketch is it moves the sketch, including the sketch origin, not just the entities relative to the origin. So if you ever run into a situation where you need to move, physically move the sketch origin within the modeling space, or maybe mirror the origin, or rotate the sketch origin, modify sketch is your command. So wrapping things up here, one final example, going back to the first sketch I built, I started on the front plane. I should have sketched on the right-hand plane, for example. So selecting sketch one on the toolbar is edit sketch plane, easily forgotten about. I see a lot of users deleting sketches and rebuilding on new planes. Now this is the way to do it. Edit sketch plane and just simply select the plane or planar face you want it to go to. And in this case, it'll rotate that sketch around once I say OK and rebuild it. Now. A couple things to think about. If you are editing a sketch plane from one plane to another and they are parallel, and those relations and dimensions can be projected from one plane to another, they'll work fine. If you're making significant changes like I've done here and rotating it 90 degrees, I will say expect some dimensions and relations to fail. What am I talking about with that? Well, let me show you one other example here. So here's a little model from Essentials I like to show. I need to take this cylindrical boss and push it and make it flush to that face. So we'll leverage Edit Sketch Plane. Now because I'm going in a parallel orientation from this reference plane to this surface, everything works fine. I'll use the D key to bring the OK to the mouse. It rebuilds not one issue in the Feature Manager tree. All dimensions and relations solve correctly. But if I decide to take it a step further, and I edit the sketch plane from this surface to this surface, a lot of those dimensions and relations and downstream features cannot reattach, so guess what? I've got some rebuild errors to, to deal with. So always think about that. You know, The relations will reattach if they are all parallel and those edges and faces and vertices can be projected from one sketch to another. So I want to thank everyone very much for sticking with me. Uh, we went through a lot of information. Uh, we do have other webcasts coming up throughout 
uh, January and into February. The next webcast we have next week is for our printing team talking about large FDM printers, you know, the best ways to apply that. And then in February, we'll have a, a webcast on new weldment functionality, focusing in on the, the structure system capabilities that 19 introduced. Uh, we'll have a great presentation on just 30 and 30 real fast, rapid-fire tips and tricks covering everything inside of SolidWorks. And then we'll wrap up month uh, by talking about some desktop metal, the studio system, and the applications for that tool. If you have any questions or you want to sign up for any of these webcasts, you know, please go to our website and, and sign up for them. So with that, I say thank you very much. If you have any questions, please send me an email. I am more than happy to answer any questions that come up. Um, if there is a sketching tip or any tip or trick that you find very useful in SOLIDWORKS and you would like to share it, um, send them on in. If you would like us to or if you would let us to, if we could you know, put it in one of these pre presentations, give us permission to do so. If you want the credit, we'll give you a shout out. If you just want to come in under the radar and it's still okay to use it, you know, we appreciate that as well. But I know that everybody on this webcast uses SOLIDWORKS differently. Um, and there's a ton of information out there, and we'd always like to get some ideas from our users and our customers and, and share it with everyone else. So again, everyone, thank you very much, and have a great rest of your day.